to discuss about objectives of this video lesson what we discuss in this video lesson that means after completion of this video lesson you would be able to know extraction of crude metal extraction of crude metal in the three methods one is roasting calcination second third is smelting can also we discuss about alloys and also properties of alloys and also we discuss some of the alloys some of the alloys composition and their uses next we also discuss in this video lesson electrochemistry lesson in the electrochemistry lesson we discuss introduction of electrochemistry next conductors and insulators next types of conductors conductors are two types one is metallic or electronic conductors another one is electrolytic or ionic conductors okay and also we discuss about in this video lesson differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors okay what we discuss in this video lesson first extraction of crude metal extraction of crude metal in the three methods first one is roasting second calcination third smelting next we discuss about alloys next also properties of alloys next we discuss about some of the alloys and alloys composition and their uses next in this video lesson we discuss about electrochemistry lesson in the electrochemistry lesson we discuss about introduction of chemistry next conductors and insulators next types of conductors conductors are two types metallic first one metallic or electronic conductors next one electrolytic or ionic conductors next we also discuss about differences between metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors okay listen first we discuss extraction of crude metal extraction of crude metal in the three methods in that first one is roasting next calcination next is smelting first we discuss about roasting what is the roasting okay the process of heating the ore in the presence of air below its melting point is called roasting this iron sulfide is the ore this iron sulfide is heated in the presence of oxygen below its melting point is called roasting okay iron sulfide is the ore this iron sulfide is heated in the presence of air below its melting point is called roasting okay, the, what is the definition the process of heating the ore in the presence of air below its melting point is called roasting roasting is carried out in case of sulfide ores these are the sulfide ores iron sulfide zinc sulfide the sulfide ore on roasting converted into oxide with the evolution of sulfur dioxide okay roasting is carried out in case of sulfide ores these are the sulfide ores these are also sulfide ores okay on roasting the sulfide ores converted to oxides with the evolution of sulfur dioxide suppose if we take iron sulfide this is the ore on roasting iron sulfide that means iron sulfide is heated in the presence of oxygen below its melting point that iron sulfide is converted to iron oxide and with the evolution of sulfur dioxide here yeah, sulfur dioxide is also evaluated similarly if we take zinc sulfide on roasting zinc sulfide is converted to zinc oxide with the evolution of sulfur dioxide that means zinc sulfide is heated in the presence of air below its melting point zinc sulfide is converted to zinc oxide and also sulfur dioxide is evaluated okay some sulfide ores on roasting reduce to metal suppose you take copper sulfide this copper sulfide on roasting first it is converted to oxide 
copper oxide and also sulfur dioxide is evaluated. After that, this cube copper sulfide react with the copper oxide and convert to copper and also here also sulfur dioxide is evaluated. This is about the roasting. Okay, listen. The process of heating the ore in the presence of air below its melting point is called roasting. Roasting is carried out in the case of sulfur ores. These sulfur ores are heated in the presence of air or sulfur ores on roasting. Sulfur ores converted to oxides with the evaluation of sulfur dioxide. Yes, some of the sulfur ores on roasting reduced to metal. So here iron sulfide converted to iron oxide, zinc sulfide converted to zinc oxide, copper sulfide finally converted to copper. Okay. This is about the extraction of crude metal. Okay, this one. Next we discuss about extraction of crude metal. The second method we discuss about that is calcination. What is the calcination means? Calcination is the reverse of roasting. So the process of heating the ore below its melting point in the absence of oxygen is called calcination. Okay. In the calcination also we take ore. That ore is ore heated in the absence of oxygen below its melting point is called calcination. Ore is heated below its melting point in the absence of oxygen is called calcination. Okay, generally calcination is carried out in the case of carbonate and hydrated ores. Okay, roasting is carried out in case of sulfide ores. Calcination is carried out in case of carbonate and hydrated ores. In this process carbonate is converted into oxide with the liberation of CO2. We take first calcium carbonate, this is the calcium ore. This calcium carbonate is heated below its melting point in the absence of oxygen. This calcium carbonate is converted to calcium oxide and also carbon dioxide is released. So, what is the calcination? The process of heating the ore below its melting point in the absence of oxygen is called calcination. Calcination is carried out in case of carbonate and hydrated ores. In this process, carbonate ores are converted to oxides with the liberation of carbon dioxide. Similarly, zinc carbide, this is a ore of zinc. This is also heated below its melting point in the absence of oxygen. This zinc carbonate is converted to zinc oxide and also carbon dioxide is released. So, these carbonate ores on calcination are converted to oxides with the liberation of carbon dioxide. Next, sure. in the calcination, hydrated ores also are taken. This hydrated ores on calcination converted to oxides and hydrated molecules. That means hydrated ores is heated below its melting point in the absence of oxygen. These hydrated ores are converted to iron oxides and also hydrogen vapor is released. This is about the calcination. So what is the calcination? The process of heating the ore below its melting point in the absence of oxygen is called calcination. Okay. Calcination <coughs> is carried out in case of carbonate and hydrated ores. In this process, carbonate is converted into oxides with the liberation of CO2. Okay. Zinc carbonate gives CaO and CO2 on calcination. Zinc carbonate on calcination gives zinc oxide and CO2. Okay. Iron hydrate on calcination gives iron oxide and H2O. Okay. Next we discuss about smelting. What is the smelting? Smelting, smelting is a pyrochemical process. This process used to extract the metal or metal sulfide in the fused state is called smelt. Okay, smelting is a pyrochemical process. It is used to extract metal or metal sulfide in the fused state 
Freeze state means liquid state is called smelting. Okay, in this process, purified ore is taken. In the smelting process, purified ore is taken. That purified ore is heated with a reducing agent like coke, that means C, or sometimes with a flux and reducing agent. Okay, purified ore is heated with a reducing agent or sometimes with a flux and reducing agent. Then the metal is obtained in the fused state. Metal is obtained in the fused state. Okay, if we take one example, an ore of iron that is hematite, this is Fe2O3 is the ore of iron, this name, common name is hematite. It is heated with coke and also with flux. Okay, if we take ore of iron, ore of iron, this ore of iron contain gang that is silica, silica, it contain acidic nature. So we take basic flux that is CaO and also add reducing agent and heat it up to high temperature. Then iron oxide is reduced to iron, carbon converted to carbon monoxide. This calcium oxide react with the gang of SiO2 and form calcium silicate. This is a slag. This is separated from the metal. Okay, listen. Smelting is a pyrochemical process. Pyrochemical process means in the pyrochemical process, high temperatures are used. It means when high temperatures are used in the process, those are pyrochemical process. So smelting is a pyrochemical process. That means in the smelting, high temperatures are used. Smelting used to extract the metal or metal sulfide in the fused state is called smelting. Fused state is the liquid state. In this process, purified ore is heated with a reducing agent or that means Fe2O3 is the purified ore. Reducing agent is the carbon. Sometimes with a flux and reducing agent. That means sometimes we take purified ore and also take reducing agent and flux and a flux. Okay, then the metal is obtained in the fused state, that means liquid state. This is the example. This is Fe2O3, its common name is hematite. It contains acidic nature gang that is SiO2. So in this process, we take a reducing agent and a flux. Okay, in this process, we take purified ore with the reducing agent and basic flux and heat up to high temperature. This iron oxide is reduced to Fe. This carbon is converted to carbon monoxide. This flux react with the gang that means impurities and form CaSiO3. This is the slag. Okay, this is the slag. This is separated from the metal. This metal is obtained in the fused state or liquid state. This is about the smelting. Okay, next we discuss about the alloys. What is the alloy means? In this lesson, we are discussing about the metals. Okay, in this lesson, we are discussing about the metals. Okay, a homogeneous mixture of two or more elements with metallic properties is called an alloy. That means a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals is called an alloy. It's called an alloy. Okay, generally alloys contain two or more metals. Sometimes non-metal may be present. Okay, a homogeneous mixture of two or more elements with the metallic properties is called an alloy. Or simply a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals is called an alloy. Generally alloys contain two or more metals. Sometimes non-metal may be present in the alloy. Next, <coughs> purpose of making of alloys. What purpose of making of alloys? Okay, mostly metals are used commercially in the form of alloys due to the some properties. Mostly metals are used commercially in the form of 
alloys due to the some properties those are alloys are harder and more malleable and ductile than metals alloys man metal to compare chestunnattu chaala hard ga untai more malleable and ductile ga untai ante palchati sheets ga spread cheyachu next manaku nails madri ga kuda iskochu okay alloys are harder and more malleable and ductile than metals next they have low melting point than that of component metals okay manaku metals iskunnattu high boiling and melting points untai ikkada metals tho compare chesinappudu alloys ku melting points anedvi lower ga untai ante manaku takku temperature vadda manamu alloys nu melt cheyochu so this is also one of the use next they are less reactive and hence more corrosion resistant మనకు మెటల్స్ ఈజీగా కరోడ్ అవుతాయి కానీ అదే అలాయిస్ మనకు అంత రియాక్టివిటీ తక్కువగా ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి అవి కరోడ్ అనేటివి కావు దే ఆర్ అలాయిస్ ఆర్ లెస్ రియాక్టివ్ అండ్ హెన్స్ మోర్ కరోజన్ రెసిస్టెంట్ దే హ్యావ్ లో ఎలక్ట్రికల్ అండ్ థర్మల్ కండక్టివిటీ కంపేర్ ద మెటల్స్ మెటల్స్ తో కంపేర్ చేసినట్లయితే మనకు అలాయిస్ కు కండక్టివిటీ ఆఫ్ low electrical and thermal conductivity okay these are the about alloys okay what is the alloy a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals with metallic properties is called an alloy generally alloys contain two or more metals sometimes non metal may be present in the alloy what purpose of making of alloys means mostly metals are used commercially in the form of alloys due to the following properties alloys are harder and more malleable and ductile than metals next they have lower melting point than that of component metals they are less reactive and hence more corrosion resistance they have low electrical and thermal conductivity okay next we discuss about some alloys okay take four columns serial number name of the alloy composition of the alloy uses of alloy first we take first alloy is the brass generally we use brass also the brass what composition is there in the brass means copper is 60 to 80 percentage zinc is 20 to 40 percentage that means brass alloy is prepared by the metals of copper and zinc that means copper zinc homogeneous mixture is called brass Okay, what is the composition copper 60 to 80 percentage zinc 20 to 40 percentage next what are the uses of brass alloy it is used in domestic utensils it is used in the manufacture of domestic utensils it is used in the manufacture of machinery parts okay brass is used in the manufacture of domestic utensils next it is also used in the manufacture of machinery parts this is about the brass next alloy is german silver a german silver it is the homogeneous mixture of copper zinc nickel german silver is the homogeneous mixture of copper zinc nickel what composition is there in the german silver means copper 50 to 60 percentage that means major metal is copper next zinc is 20 to 30 percentage nickel 10 to 30 percentage this is the composition copper 50 to 60 percentage zinc 20 to 30 percentage nickel 10 to 30 percentage next what are the uses of german silver it is used in the manufacture of utensils and ornaments it is used for making resistance coils okay resistance coils naku coils nu use chestunta machineries lo okay Okay, it is used in the manufacture of utensils and ornaments it is used for making resistance coils this is about the german silver next one nichro this is another alloy this is the homogeneous mixture of nickel iron chromium what composition is there in the nichro means nickel 60 percentage iron 25 percentage chromium 15 percentage major metal is nickel nickel is 60 percentage iron 25 chromium 15 percentage next what are the uses of nichrome 
it is used for making resistance wire and coils okay resistance wire and coils this is the resistance wire and coils means resistance wire means generally it is used in the iron boxes like it is used to manufacture electric articles it is used to manufacture electric articles okay these are the uses of nichro so first one brass it is the homogeneous mixture of copper zinc copper 60 to 80% zinc 20 to 40% next what are the uses of brass is used in the manufacture of domestic utensils and also in machinery parts next alloy is german silver it is a homogeneous mixture of copper zinc nickel next copper is 50 to 60% zinc 20 to 30% nickel 10 to 30% Next, German silver is also used in the manufacture of utensils and ornaments. Next, it is used for making resistance coils. Next, ally is nichro. It is a homogeneous mixture of nickel, iron, chromium. Nickel 60%, iron 25%, chromium 15%. Next, it is used for making resistance wire and coils. Next, it is also used to manufacture electric articles. Next, we discuss another two alloys. Okay, next one is next ally is stainless steel. It is the homogeneous mixture of iron, chromium, carbon. Iron percentage is 78 to 88%. This is the major metal in the stainless steel. Next chromium 12 to 21%. Next carbon 0.1 to 1%. Okay, what are the uses of stainless steel? Means chemical equipments and automobile parts are manufactured stainless steel so chemical equipments or automobile parts no manufacture just next it is used in making sinks houses stainless sinks next it is used in making utensils houses low major stainless steel utensils just Next, it is used in making dental and surgical instruments. Dental and surgical instruments, so stainless steel position, scissor, so different, different items are prepared. Okay, stainless steel, iron 78 to 88%, chromium 12 to 21%, carbon 0.1 to 1%. Next, chemical equipments and automobile parts are manufactured. It is used in making sinks, utensils, dental and surgical instruments this is about the stainless steel next one duralumin next ally is the duralumin duralumin is the homogeneous mixture of aluminium copper manganese and magnesium duralumin is the homogeneous mixture of aluminium copper manganese and magnesium next what are the uses of duralumin it is used in making of automobile and locomotive parts and cables etc. The duralumin is used in making of automobile and locomotive parts, cables etc. Next, it is also used in the aircraft industry. Duralumin ally is the weightless, that's why it is used in the aircraft industry. Wings, body and the duralumin to repair system. It is also used in aircraft industry. Okay. Stainless steel, iron 78 to 88%, chromium 12 to 21%, carbon 0.1 to 1%. So, chemical equipments and automobile parts are manufactured. It is used in making sinks, utensils, dental and surgical instruments. Next, duralumin is the homogeneous mixture of aluminium, copper, manganese, magnesium. Aluminium 9.5%. Copper 4%, manganese 0.5%, magnesium 0.5%. Next, it is used in making of automobile, locomotive parts, cables, etc. It is also used in aircraft industry. This is about the metallurgy lesson. What we have discussed in the metallurgy lesson? Okay. First, we discussed about introduction of metallurgy. Next, we discussed about Okay, next we discussed about 
Okay, listen. In this video lesson, we discussed about introduction of metallurgy. Next, characteristics of metals. That means what topics are what what topics have been discussed in this metallurgy lesson. Okay, next first one characteristics of metal. Next, distinguish between metals and non-metals. Next, we discuss some terms used in the metallurgy. Those are mineral, ore, gang or matrix. Next one, flux. Next one, slag. Fluxes are two types. One is acidic flux, another one basic flux. Next, we discussed also concentration of ore. In the concentration of ore, we discussed one method that is fourth flotation of method. That method is used for the sulfide ores. Next, we discussed extracting of crude metal. In this Extracting of crude metal, three methods are there. One is roasting, second calcination, third smelting. Next, we discussed about alloys. What is alloy? Homogeneous mixture of two or more elements with metallic properties. Next, what purpose of making of alloys? We discuss. Next, composition and uses of some alloys. Those are brass, German silver, micro, stainless steel, duralumin. Okay. next we discuss about electrochemistry okay some more time is there in the video lesson that's why we discuss about electrochemistry okay already we discuss the introduction of electrochemistry already know that electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry Electrochemistry deals with the relationship between electricity and chemical changes. That means when electricity is passed, some chemical reactions occur. Another chemical reactions, electricity is generated by chemical reactions, okay, which deals with the relationship between electricity and chemical changes. That means sometimes chemical changes occurs by the electricity sometimes electricity is generated by the chemical changes it is a well known fact during electrolysis is well known fact during electrolysis of copper sulfate solution copper deposits over the cathode this shows that electrical energy produces chemical reactions Electrochemistry has a great engineering and industrial importance Why? because sometimes electricity is generated, sometimes chemical changes occurred by electricity. So electrochemistry has a great engineering and industrial importance. Since the laws of electrochemistry are used for the development of important technical process like extraction and refining of metals, Synthesis of organic and inorganic compounds. Next, electroplating, electrotyping, and electroprinting, etc. Electrochemical machinery. Electroanalysis of trace elements. Next, construction of electrochemical cells, etc. In this chapter, various aspects of electrochemistry should be studied. So listen, electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with the relationship between electricity and chemical changes. It is a well known fact that during electrolysis of copper sulphate solution, copper deposits over the cathode. This shows that electrical energy produces chemical reactions. Electrochemistry has a great engineering and industrial importance since the laws of electrochemistry are used for the development of important technical processes like extraction and refining of metals, synthesis of organic and inorganic compounds, electroplating, electrotyping and electroprinting etc. Next, electrochemical machinery. Next, electroanalysis of trace elements. Next, construction of electrochemical cell etc. In this chapter, various aspects of electrochemistry should be studied. Okay, next we discuss in this lesson conductors and insulators. Okay, generally, substances are classified into conductors and insulators. So, what is the 
electricity or what is the current current is the flow of electrons or electricity is the flow of electrons in other words flow of electric charges through a conducting medium is also called electricity or conduct correct flow of electric charges through a conducting medium is also called electricity or current first we discuss about conductors already we know that we discussed in our in your lower classes the substances which permit the passage of electric current through them are called conductors it means which substances permit the passage of electric current through them are called conductors the substances may be solid materials metals or fused salts or aqueous solutions all these are the conductors these conductors permit the passage of electric current through them next one insulators this is the reverse of conductors a substance which does not permit the passage of electric current through them through it is called insulator or non conductor a substance which does not permit the passage of electric current through it is called insulator or non conductors okay insulators examples non metals except graphite graphite is a non metal but it is a conductor next wood glass rubber wax etc we know that this is about the conductors and insulators conductors the substances which permit the passage of electric current through them are called conductors these substances may be solid materials metals or fused salts or aqueous solutions next insulators a substance which does not permit the passage of electric current through it is called insulator or non conductor example non metal wood glass rubber wax etc okay next we discuss about types of conductors okay, the electronic the electric conductors are classified into two categories based on the mechanism of flow of current they are metallic or electronic conductors second one electrolytic or ionic conductors listen conductors are classified into two types based on the mechanism of flow of current one is metallic or electronic conductors another one electrolytic or ionic conductors first we discuss first one metallic or electronic conductors this is the electric circuit okay in this electric circuit one battery is there this battery is connected to the bulb so the wire and also key is there okay this place is the high potential region minus is the low potential region when key is on current is passed like flow of electrons through the wire then bulb is on that means in this electric circuit wire is the metallic or electronic conductors what we have observed when bulb is on that means the conductors which permit flow of electric current through them due to the movement of electrons when electrons are moved through the wire by the battery that type of conductors are metallic conductors the conductors which permit flow of electric current through them due to the movement of electrons are called metallic conductors in metallic conductors flow of electrons takes place from high potential region to low potential region already i have explained plus is the high potential region minus is the low potential region so in this metallic conductors flow of electrons or current takes place from high potential regions to low potential region when electricity is passed through the metallic current conductor no chemical changes occur in this no chemical changes occur when electricity is passed through the metallic conductor no chemical changes occur due to the flow of electricity due to the flow of electricity 
Hence, no transfer of matter. Matter is also not transferred. The conductivity decreases with the increase of temperature in these conductors. The conductivity decreases with the increase of temperature in these conductors. Examples metals, alloys, graphite, etc. Generally, one of the electric circuit is in the electric circuit. Here, battery is there. This battery is connected with the wire to the bulb. Next, plus charge is connected to the minus charge. Here, plus is the high potential region, minus is the low potential region. Okay, when the bulb is on, means the conductors which permit flow of electric current through them due to the movement of electrons. Then, bulb is on. This wire is the metallic conductor. In metallic conductors, flow of electrons or current takes place from high potential region to low potential region. Okay, when electricity is passed through the wire or metallic conductor, chemical changes are not occurred. Chemical changes are not occurred. Hence, matter is also not transferred. Okay. The conductivity decreases with increase of temperature in these conductors. If temperature increases, okay, conductivity decreases in the metallic conductors. Examples, metals, alloys, graphite, etc. This is about the metallic or electronic conductors. We should discuss about second one. Electrolytic or ionic conductors or electrolytes. Okay, second one is electrolytic conductors or ionic conductors and also its common name is electrolytes. The conductors which permit flow of electric current in the fused state or molten state or liquid state or in aqueous solution are called electrolytic conductors or electrolytes. Electrolytes conduct current due to the movement of ions towards the oppositely charged electrodes. Chemical reactions takes place in electrolyte due to the flow of electricity. Okay, hence mass of electrolyte decreases. The conductivity of electro electrolytes increases with the increasing of temperature. Okay, listen, this is the part. Okay, we take first one beaker and take two electrodes. One act as anode, another one act as cathode. Next, this two electrodes are connected through the connected with the battery through the wire. Okay, listen. In this beaker, we take metal in fused state or aqueous solution. Aqueous solution means suppose we take water and add NaCl. NaCl is dissolved in the water. That is the NaCl aqueous solution. When electricity is passed through the battery, this NaCl dissociate into Na plus Cl minus ions. This Cl minus ions attract towards the anode. Why? Because anode is positive charge. Next, cations move towards the cathode. Why? Because, sorry, anions. NaCl dissociate into Na plus Cl minus. Na plus R cations, Cl R minus R anions. Okay, anode is a positive charge, cathode is a negative charge. Generally, negative ions, anions move towards the anode why because anode positive charge. Next, cations, Na plus ions move towards the cathode why because cathode is negative charge. Na plus gain one electron from the cathode and form CNA that Na deposited on the cathode. That's why electrolyte mass is decreased in this electrolysis. Okay, we observe this. What happened? The conductors which permit flow of electric current in the fused state or in aqueous solution are called electrolytic conductors or electrolytes. That means when electricity is passed through the aqueous solution, that solution dissociate into ions, then flow of electrons takes place by the movement of ions. 
the type of conductors are ionic conductors or electrolytes okay the conductivity of electrolytes increases with the increase of temperature why because when temperature increases these ions will be increases by the dissociation of salt so what are the examples acids bases and metal salts acids bases and metal salts okay, next we discuss about differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors or electronic conductors and electrolytes take two columns serial number and first column we take metallic conductors second column we take electrolytic conductors first what are the metallic conductors the conductors which permit flow of electricity due to the movement of electrons are called metallic conductors next what are the electrolytic conductors the conductors which permit flow of electricity in the fused state or in solution are called electrolytic conductors so definitions are important the conductors which permit flow of electricity due to the movement of electrons are called metallic conductors the conductors which permit flow of electricity in the fused state or solution are called electrolytic conductors next metallic conductors conduct the current by the flow of electrons from cathode to anode okay metallic conductors conduct the current by the flow of electrons from cathode to anode next electrolytic conductors conduct the current by the movement of ions towards oppositely charged electrodes already i explained okay cations move towards the cathode and ions move towards the anode okay but electrolytic conductors conduct the current by the movement of ions towards oppositely charged electrodes next no chemical reactions occur due to the flow of current in the metallic conductors no chemical reactions takes place due to the flow of current in metallic conductors chemical reactions takes place due to the flow of current in the electrolytic conductors okay already i explained when electricity is passed through the aqueous solution anions move towards the anode cations move towards the cathode next reactions takes place at the electrodes so chemical reactions takes place due to the flow of current in electrolytic conductors next uh, metallic conductors do not involve the transfer of matter okay metallic conductors do not involve the transfer of matters next electrolytic conductors involve transfer of matter okay that means nea is deposited on the cathode chlorine gas deposited or liberated at the anode that means electrolytic conductors involve transfer of matter next metallic conductors do not involve the transfer of matter next the conductivity decreases with the increase of temperature in metallic conductors the conductivity decreases with the increase of temperature in metallic conductors the conductivity increases with the increase of temperature in electrolytic conductors examples for metallic conductors metals and alloys next examples of electrolytic conductors acids and bases these are the differences between metallic conductors and electric conductors listen the conductors which permit the flow of electricity due to the movement of electrons are called metallic conductors next the conductors which permit flow of electricity in the fused state or in solution are called electrolytic conductors next they conduct the current by the flow of electrons from cathode to anode in metallic conductors conduct the current by the movement of ions towards oppositely charged electrodes in the electrolytic conductors no chemical reactions occur due to flow of current in metallic conductors chemical reactions take place due to flow of current in electrolytic conductors they do not involve the transfer of matter they involve transfer of matter next the conductivity decreases with the increase of temperature the conductivity increases with the increase of temperature 
Examples for metallic conductors are metals and alloys. Examples for electrolytic conductors are acids and bases. This is about the differences between metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors. So what we have discussed in this video lesson? In the metallurgy lesson, extraction of crude metal, next roasting, calcination, smelting, alloys, next composition and uses of some alloys. In the electrochemistry lesson, okay, conductors, insulators, next types of conductors, those are metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors and also we discussed about differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors. Okay, thank you for the listening of this video.